let's discuss password security. Now, first of all, let's just take it back a step and discuss the concept of a password. One of the concerns with computers from the very beginning is this. If you have multiple users on the system, how do you differentiate between those users? And this is a task that was solved years ago as the first computers were being developed. A concern that followed immediately on the heels of that is how do you prevent people that aren't allowed to use the computer from using it? Out of this came a whole lot of concerns related to security for digital machines. But one of the most basic ones is the concept that an individual user on a system who's allowed to use that system demonstrates the fact or proves the fact that they're allowed to use that system by putting in the correct password, one that they've set or has been assigned to them by administrators of the system. So here's a password. Now, I know I'm preaching to the choir here. You guys have all used passwords for a lot of different things on computers. But knowing that they are related fundamentally to keeping security in on a computer, and what that means will help you as a software developer and, frankly, as a user of technology. Here's the thing. If you're going to allow someone to access the system and control who does allow or who does get access to that system, you need to be able to have as safe a method as possible. Now, what do I mean? You don't want the password to be easily guessed. If someone with malicious intent tries to access a system by impersonating another user, how do you prevent that? One of the ways that that's done is by choosing passwords that are difficult to break or guess. Well, the question would be, how, how is anybody going to guess your password? If your password has to relate to the, you know, your favorite pet when you were four years old and nobody knows who that is, how are they going to guess that? There are a lot of different approaches, and we're not going to get into them, but know that there are many different ways to try to guess a password, and successfully so. So what do you do about this? Well, it has to do with creating a password that's secure. Secure can never mean 100%, as you'll see in a moment. But choosing a password that has the best possible chance of not being be able to be guessed. Now let's get to how you could guess it, how you could guess a password. And this gets into how to choose a good password. One of the simplest ways is design a computer program that over and over again, one after the other, inputs as many possible variations on what a password could be as possible. So, let's say you have a user, and he's not a good person. He's pretending to be a guy named Bob. Bob, this fake Bob, knows that the real Bob over here accesses a website at kayaks.com. The fake Bob really wants to get Bob's discount on a kayak. So he's figured out that the username that Bob uses is Bob M, because his name is Bob Miller. What he doesn't know is the password. So Bob could use his computer, and when I say Bob, I mean the fake one. Fake Bob could use his computer to log on to this kayaks.com website and over and over again, Put in the username Bob M and try a password. He could try A, 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 A. And then he could try A, 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 B. And so on and so forth for 10 million possible variations. Now, he's not going to want to sit there for 10 million possible variations. But he could create a computer program. And this program, installed on his computer, could over and over and over again try variations of the password for this username Bob. That's called a brute force attack. It just means one after the other with no concept ahead of time of what the password might be, just try to guess it. Don't make the same guess twice, that would be stupid. But change the guess over and over again according to some predetermined pattern and see if you get it. That could work. So, what do you do about that? Well, you can make your password really long. Many, many, many different words and characters. You could make it have special characters like that up carrot or the ampersand symbol. You can make it so the variations involved approach the billions of different variations and it just absolutely wouldn't work because it would take so much time to try to guess an individual password. That's one method. 
And there are a lot of different things that can be done by malicious people to try to guess passwords. And this isn't going to be a lecture on that. All of this is to illustrate the fact that when you choose a password, you do want to, you want to choose one that has the best chance of being secure. And here are a few pointers about that. The pointers that we'll talk about, you often see actually printed on a website next to where you're going to choose a password. So some of these will be familiar to you. One, again, is choose a long password. You often see things that say at least eight characters. Well, some of them say a combination of capital letters and lowercase letters. Some of them say use at least one special symbol like the caret. Some of them say use a number. All of these are to provide a highly complex password that resists some of the efforts that people can take to try to guess your password. Now here's another one. This is going to be common sense, but I guarantee every single one of you has violated this. Okay, maybe not all of you. I know I have. Don't ever give anyone your password. Just don't do it. Don't give anybody your password. And by the way, don't give anybody your password. It's just not safe. Now, I know I'm kind of joking. There are jobs you'll get where your position requires that you absolutely not, under any circumstances whatsoever, give anyone else your password. They say that, don't do it. It's not worth your career. There are always alternatives. Don't give anybody your password. So, there, end of soapbox. Now, there are a couple other aspects of this that are worth mentioning. One is that people can be really tricky. And obviously, the people behind stuff like this really are not nice people. And unfortunately, they can be very, very creative. There's a concept out there of what's called social engineering. And you may have heard this term. Essentially, what it means is gathering enough data about the social media presence of an individual online that you have kind of an in to guess their username and password combinations or any other security information. Social engineering also includes things like calling up to a place where you have an account and pretending to be you or pretending to be a spouse of yours and using the social interaction between you and say a customer service rep at the other end of that phone, getting that customer service rep to give you data that you shouldn't have because you're pretending to be somebody else. So these efforts are all under a large broad category of social engineering, but you can get the concept. Someone with ill intent trying to use any effort possible to guess your credentials. A username or password are called credentials. They prove you are who you are. That you have credence or can be believed. They're trying to guess your credentials through a variety of technical and social interaction methodologies. Finally, let's discuss an occurrence that happens all too often. And it doesn't require any special thinking on the part of the person with ill intent, any special engineering software program to gain access to accounts that you don't want them to have access to. And that is not logging out of whatever you're logged into. Let's look at this. You've got your Bob over here, right? And you're logged into kayaks.com, say at a Starbucks. And you get up because you see a friend and you're talking to your friend across the room for about five minutes. Meanwhile, this guy over here doesn't even need to be, pretend to be Bob. He sits down at your computer and you're already logged in. I know it sounds simple and silly and who would do it, but it happens. If you're going to be away from your computer for any amount of time, lock the computer or log out of whatever sites you're in if you don't want access provided to other people.